he has had an impact on cancer research and on heart disease and on eye disease and on inflammatory disease. And he counted 60 diseases that had an angiogenic component. So I think it's important to talk about the impact that he had on all of those areas. And maybe first the impact he had on the study of blood vessels in vascular biology. Because before he came along, most of the scientific studies on blood vessels were about how they developed, how they arose in the embryo. And then people sort of left them alone <laughs> once, once the uh, you know, organism was, was formed, was born. And they didn't care about the blood vessels, especially normal ones. Some people in cardiology cared about blood vessels in the heart, or they cared about atherosclerotic blood vessels. But by and large, the science of vascular biology was limited to how they developed. And what he really did was he made a relationship between any tissue that needed to grow larger needed to attract new blood vessels. And the easiest way to see that was in a tumor, which was an organ that wasn't there before, and all of a sudden it starts to grow and it needs new blood vessels. But fat has a lot of blood vessels. And one of his enormous contributions with Maria Rupnik was to realize that maybe angiogenic inhibition could be a treatment for obesity. So he was always looking for where was the relationship. And he also realized that in some diseases, like um, peripheral vascular diseases where your blood vessels and your, and your limbs aren't, aren't working well or are collapsing, he realizes that if you could stimulate angiogenesis, then you might be able to treat those. So it wasn't all about inhibition. It was about inhibition where there were too many blood vessels. And it was about uh, stimulation in a wound or in you know, a limb there where the blood vessels were, were failing um, so that you could treat that disease. The other thing is a lot of people look back to his 1971 paper in the New England Journal of Medicine where he first elaborated the notion that inhibiting angiogenesis would be a treatment for cancer. But what's remarkable, if you go to the last paragraph of that very famous paper, he outlines how inhibiting angiogenesis could, angiogenesis could be very important in treating eye disease. Many eye diseases have a vascular component. And he talks about treating inflammatory disease. He lays out several different diseases where angiogenesis inhibition. So from the very earliest days, he was thinking about cancer, but he was thinking about the global importance of angiogenesis.